Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. Hi, in this one I want to talk about the player camera. So let's head to the original game and try to figure out what's happening over there. So like we said in the previous video, when Rayman runs, the camera kind of just follows him, doesn't actually rotate with him. It just keeps looking at him while it's, it's following him. For jumping behavior, when Rayman jumps, the camera kind of does nothing. It doesn't look up at Rayman, it doesn't move up with Rayman. It actually seems to just update its height when Rayman is grounded. So when I land on the next platform, that's when it starts moving upwards. An exception from that rule is when Rayman is launched by something. So when I walk on this bug, the camera moves up with Rayman. There are also these spots where the camera kind of moves to a set position and starts looking at Rayman from that place. Also when Rayman is hidden behind some kind of object, the camera starts rotating to find him. Just like over here. I'll do it again. And that's pretty much it for the camera for now. Let me hop into Unreal and show you how I went about doing all of this. So I made another C++ class for the cameraman. I made it a pawn again because I need the camera to handle collision as well and I'm going to use the same collide and slide function that I'm using for Rayman. So here in the constructor I just have a sphere collider for the collision and a camera movement component for the collide and slide function. There's no camera here because I'm copying this actor's location and pasting it to the player camera's location that's in the player pawn. But in hindsight I think it would be a better idea to actually add a camera here and just set the player's view to this camera. So first let's cover the camera's behavior when Rayman is grounded. So the way I want to do this is to have the camera looking at Rayman at all times and then just moving back and forth in its local forward vector to maintain a steady distance from Rayman. I do that by finding a look at player vector by subtracting the player's location from the camera's location and then setting the camera's rotation to the look at player vector's rotation. To be precise, I changed the camera's yaw rotation because that's the axis that makes the camera look to the right or left. I also made it where if the look at player vector rotation pitch is larger than some kind of value, I set the camera's rotation pitch to also match that. Pitch is the axis that moves up and down. I have this set up this way so the camera starts looking down at Rayman only when he starts getting out of view and not all the time. I don't change the camera roll because, well, I don't want it to be doing one of these. And now maintaining the camera's distance from the player is just a matter of taking the player's location and subtracting from it the camera's forward vector. However, the forward vector is just one centimeter long and we want the camera to be further away from the player than one centimeter. So we have to multiply the forward vector by some kind of amount, like for example, 500 centimeters to make it be five meters behind the player. And for the camera height, I just add a set amount to the player's Z component. All these variables are settable in the blueprint so I can play around with them easily until I find values that I like. I put the whole formula in the lerp to smoothen the camera movement. Finally, to make sure the camera updates its height only when the player is grounded, I put the whole thing in an if statement. If he's not grounded, I still update the camera's location in the X and Y axis, but I keep the Z axis unchanged. So now it updates the camera's height only when Rayman is grounded, like we saw in the original. Okay, so we got the camera going. It keeps its distance from Rayman, looks at him at all times. When Rayman jumps, it doesn't move up. It just updates its height when Rayman lands. Okay, let's go over how I made the camera to rotate around obstruction. So the way I see this is I need to make the camera start rotating around Rayman when 
he is no longer in view and I need to find a way to make the camera know when it should start rotating clockwise and when anti-clockwise so it doesn't get stuck on some kind of wall or something. To check if Rayman is still in the camera's view, I simply use the sphere trace from the camera's location to Rayman's location and if it hits anything else than Rayman then I know that Rayman is not visible and I need to start doing something about it. Now here's what I'm thinking about deciding which way the camera should rotate once Rayman is no longer in view. Let's imagine Rayman walking into a tunnel. If he was facing left when he was entering the tunnel, I imagine it's a pretty safe bet to start moving the camera right, and vice versa. To find which way Rayman is facing, I use the dot product again. The first vector in my dot product is the camera's right vector, and the second one is Rayman's forward vector. So if Rayman's forward vector is somewhat aligned with camera's right vector, then the dot product is gonna be bigger than zero. If Rayman is facing left, however, then the dot product will go into the negatives. So here in this formula, I start moving the camera right when Rayman is no longer in view, but I multiply it by the dot product sign. So if the sign of the dot product is minus one, then the camera will start moving left. Okay, let's check it out. I move from the right and the camera falls left. But if I move the other way, the camera start rotating to the right. Awesome. So that's pretty much all I have as far as C++ goes. Honestly, I'm not entirely happy with the camera yet. It can get jittery at times or get stuck on geometry. So in the future, I would like to either spend some more time refining this or rethink my approach entirely and maybe try to figure out some kind of a different, better solution. Anyway, let's talk about some blueprints I created that give me some more control over how the camera behaves. So the first one is a trigger box that can override the default camera distance or camera height while Rayman is inside the box. So it will be something like this. Let's increase this, for example. So something like this. I walk inside and it changes. I walk outside, it goes back to normal. Now the other thing this thing can do is it has this little camera over here that I can move. So for example, let's move it to look from the door over here. And now if I check this setting, uh, override location, then once I hit play, once I walk in the trigger box, it moves the camera to be in that place that I set it. And once I walk out, it falls Raymond again. So it kind of handles this behavior where the camera can move to a set location and watch Raymond from that point. So let's go over how I made the blueprint and we'll start with the viewport. The blueprint is made out of a collision component that's here to check whether Rayman is inside or not. The sprite component is just for my sanity so it's easier for me to find in the, on the map. The same with the arrow. Uh, and then I have an override location component which basically acts as a point that the camera is gonna move to. And the debug camera is here just so I can see what's the view from that point. So it's here just for my convenience when laying out the trigger boxes. Let's check out the blueprint graph to go over how this works. So in the begin play event, which gets called whenever the trigger box gets spawned, I store the camera's default distance from Rayman, the default camera height and default lerp speed in some variables. I do this so I can revert the changes back to normal whenever Rayman exits the trigger box. So then we have our on component begin overlap event which gets triggered whenever an actor overlaps with this trigger box. I get the player pawn and check if the actor that entered this trigger box is equal to the player pawn. I do this to make sure that all the logic happens only when Rayman enters the trigger box and not any other actor. So. If this is true, we check if the override location setting is true or not. If it's false, that's when we want the that's when we want our trigger box to just change some default camera settings. So we change the camera distance to the camera distance we set in this trigger box, and we change the camera height to the camera height we set in this trigger box. And the same with the lerp speed. I also added a key player pitch variable to the camera pawn so I can decide whether I want the camera to look up and down or not 
And here I can change that also in this trigger box. Now let's imagine that override location is set to true. That's when I take the override location components world location and copy it onto the player camera. I'll just quickly remind that the override location component is this little thing over here. And then so I don't have to copy the camera location for every frame, I added a variable in the player camera It's called location override that if it's true, the camera no longer follows Rayman and instead it stays at the location set by the location override component until we set this variable back to false. And then I have the on component end overlap event that gets called whenever Rayman exits the trigger box to put all the settings back to normal. I also have a second type of trigger box where whenever Rayman enters, the camera will follow Rayman, but it will also move along a predetermined spline. So let's go over this one now. We also have a collision component for to detect when Rayman enters or not. And also a key factor is this spline variable that's instance editable, editable. This allows me to connect the spline from the level to this trigger box. So here most of the logic happens in event tick. Let's ignore this branch for now. So every frame I'm overriding the player camera's location with the closest point on the spline to the player location. However, I don't want the camera to find the closest possible location to the player because I want there to be some distance between the player and the camera. So I do this basically the same way I do it in code. So I find the player's location and I subtract from the player's location the camera's forward vector multiplied by some kind of distance. So now the camera maintains its distance from the player the same way it does when it's not moving along a spline. Now I have this branch here because the tick event, well, it doesn't care if Rayman is inside the trigger box or not. So this logic will happen regardless of that. So that's why I have this activate variable, which becomes true whenever Rayman overlaps with the trigger box. And of course becomes false when Rayman exits the trigger box. So now all this tick logic happens only for as long as Rayman is inside of the trigger box. Okay, this is where I would like to end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. In the next one, I'm going to leave behind the game logic stuff for a little while and go back to 3D as I'm going to talk about how I made the whole Fairy Council exterior area. Okay, bye-bye.